What's up, guys? All right, let's take a look at variables in Rust and in particular, mutability in variables in Rust. Now, I want to preface this with something I always kind of like to say, and that's that pretty much every single programming language is kind of fundamentally the same throughout. I guess the technical way that I could label that would be that a lot of programming languages, they, they just have a lot of very similar things in common at their core. Variables in particular usually tend to fall underneath that umbrella. And I want you guys, especially if you're familiar with other programming languages already, I want you guys to think about everything that I'm going to talk about in this video in regards to whether or not it's very similar to other programming languages, and then also look at the things that are maybe a little bit different. So let's get into it. Okay, and if you guys have been following the same Rust tutorial succession of videos that I have on my channel, then you guys already kind of know a little bit about using a variable in Rust and in particular, you guys know that variables in Rust by default are immutable. And if you didn't see that video, if you go to my channel, it's this one right here, reading user input in Rust. And if I wasn't forgetful, then I probably put or hopefully put a link to that video in this video somewhere like right around here. But just to recap real quick, we already know, you already know, and if you didn't already know, now you do know that in Rust, variables are going to be immutable by default. So if you're coming from a different type of programming background, let's just say you're used to doing a lot of JavaScript-esque type stuff or maybe Python type stuff, anything that's kind of cool and modern, then this might be kind of a little annoying to you for a little bit. And you might ask yourself, hey, well, why is Rust doing that? And Rust themselves explains it like this. They say that this is one of the many quote unquote nudges that Rust gives you to write your code in a way that takes advantage of the safety and concurrency that Rust has to offer. But you do still have the option to make your variables mutable if you so choose to. So what we want to look at in particular with variables is why Rust would encourage you to favor immutability versus why Rust would sometimes encourage you to kind of opt out of having that immutability by default. We know that in Rust, when variables are immutable, once you have a value bound to the name of a variable, you can't change its value again after that. And speaking of immutability, let's just generate a new project real quick in order to demonstrate something in particular about variables and immutability in Rust. And I'm going to use Cargo to make this new project. So I'll just say Cargo new. I am U-T-A-B-L-E, immutable dash var, something like that, whatever. And then let's open that project up in Visual Studio's code. Let's go back to our main .rs file, which should already have that little hello world print line in there. So real quick, let's just delete that print line and let's make a variable with our let keyword. So let, and I wanna make a number variable. So I'm just gonna say X set equal to five. And then after that, I'm gonna take that same X, so the same variable, and I'm gonna set it equal to six. So to note, like I was talking about earlier with Rust, with these default immutable variables, with the fact that variables are immutable by default, you can't really take a variable that you're creating, assign it a value, and then later on change that value. So I don't have my normal terminal pulled up anymore. I'm just using the built-in terminal inside of VS Code. You can do either. But for me to prove to you that I'm not lying to you guys about that, take a look here. If I try to run this thing, so if I go cargo run, if we ignore those warnings right there and we go down to this error in particular right here, what does it say? It says, cannot assign twice to immutable variable X. So there you go. It's telling you you can't do it. But if you guys remember previously on one of the last tutorial videos, I think it was probably the exact same one that I mentioned earlier in here. We have a keyword that allows us to take our variables and turn them from immutable into mutable. And that keyword is the mut or mute keyword. So now if I throw that in front of the X declaration on line three, where I have let mut equal five, then on line four, I take that same variable that's already assigned to five and then assign its value to six. If we go back and run this thing again, cargo run. All right, now we just get warnings that it's never used. We don't get any errors. and by the way, these warnings are because we're not actually doing anything with the variables in here. If we were to do some kind of like arithmetic with them or like use them for anything, put them in a print line, that would go away. But we know that the thing compiled and ran without any errors this time. And that's because we just allowed that variable to go from being immutable to mutable. So right off the bat, when I was just talking about to you guys about how, hey, Rust has all variables automatically be immutable by default. What are some situations where they're going to kind of like nudge you and to say, hey, ho, 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 we hope that you make this immutable. Right off the bat, we know in particular that since they're always going to be immutable by default, that should say something that should say, okay, so Rust, most likely if I'm going to be using this language, I'm probably going to be wanting to keep things as immutable as possible as far as making variables. But if you're actually doing anything of 
real value, you already know that that's not going to be the case. You're definitely going to have to have variables that will allow you to change values. So at the end of the day, it's up to you as to whether or not you're going to need the variable to be immutable or mutable. So just know that in particular, you're going to want to try to keep things as immutable as possible as far as making variables go. However, there are a lot of other types of variables that you can create in case you need to use them for certain different types of situations. We can talk about that more on in the next video. Smash the like, leave a comment or not. That's up to you. I'm out, guys. See ya.